with reciprocal inhibition. And the clinical sign of canal paresis and measurement of impulsive testing depends on understanding of these principles. This was the first time that we described the clinical sign, which is the corrective saccade, and that was 22 years ago. And things have happened since then. Let's go over the principles of the catch-up saccade. This is a normal subject, and this is a subject with a right ear destroyed, only a left ear. This is a one-eared subject that has only a left ear. In a normal subject, looking at the target, which is the observer here, if the head is rapidly turned to the right, during head rotation, the eyes keep looking at the target. And at the end of head rotation, the eyes are still looking at the target. If you take a subject with only one ear, the left ear working, the only way that the eyes can go to the left during head rotation right is by inhibition of the left lateral canal. Here's a subject looking at the target, the observer. The head is rapidly turned to the right. The eyes do not move with the head, as in a normal subject, but in the head, with the head, and therefore they need to make a corrective saccade to come back to target. This observable corrective saccade is the clinical sign of canal paresis. But we need to know that what we measure when we measure a head impulse test is not exactly what we see at the bedside. What we see at the bedside is this corrective saccade which we mentioned. What we can measure, here being measured by scleral search coils by Conrad Weber, is what you can see here is the slow phase correction plus the corrective saccade. In other words, the basic deficit. The deficit in slow phase, the low gain, plus the corrective saccade in response can both be measured. But these corrective saccades can occur in two different times and one is observable and the other isn't. This is a recording of a normal subject and a person who's had one vestibular nerve cut. That person has only one working lateral canal. Here we show head velocity in the uh, light trace and eye velocity in the bold trace. It's been inverted for convenience. The time scale is up to 500 milliseconds. The magnitude here is up to 25 degrees. Underneath is velocity up to 300 degrees per second squared. In a normal subject, obviously eye position follows head position. Eye velocity follows head velocity. You can see the timing difference between the peaks of eye velocity and head velocity, which obviously reflects the latency of the vestibulocular reflex, which is 7 to 10 milliseconds. Here's the same data now differentiated into velocity. Here is head velocity, head position, I'm sorry, and here's the corrective eye position. And you can see here straight away that the gain of the vestibulock reflex is reduced with two corrective saccades. This is in the inhibitory direction of the only semicircular canal. So this is the off direction, if you like, the push response. Here is one saccade which occurs after the head movement which will be visible to the observer and we call overt. And this saccade which occurs during the head movement will be invisible to the observer which we call covert. Now if this patient, in this patient one would see the overt saccade although one does not see the covert saccade one still knows that there is a deficit. If of course the patient made only a covert saccade you wouldn't know he had a deficit. So we need to know this. This is important that there are covert saccades which occur during head rotation, are imperceptible to a clinical observer, but measurable, of course, and overt saccades which occur after head rotation, which are detectable by a clinical observer, are the clinical sign of canal paresis. Now let's just look at what a head impulse test looks like in a unilateral vestibular loss. This patient clearly has a loss to the left, you can very easily see the corrective saccade to the left. As soon as we turn the head to the left, the corrective saccade becomes clear. This subject's wearing a head velocity monitor in his mouth. The corrective saccade is easily visible. In slow motion, it's even more easily seen. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. There's the corrective saccade. This person makes overt saccades, but this one makes covert saccades. This patient has the same VOR deficit as the previous patient, but in this patient, the saccades are invisible clinically because they occur during head rotation.
even in slow motion, it's impossible to see the covert saccade. Now, head impulses can be graded, increasing velocity. These are 50 degree per second, or 100 degree per second, I'm sorry. This is slow head movements, but you can still see that when the person's head is turned to the left, you can still see the corrective saccade. This is going at 200 degrees per second, and again, going to the left, the corrective saccades easily seen. This is about as fast as is comfortable. The corrective saccade is very easy to see at with a 300 degree per second head impulse. This is now the measurements from that last video which shows the graded head impulses. Head velocity here is in blue, eye velocity in yellow. These are the 50 degree per second head impulses. These are the 300 degree per second head impulses. In yellow are the eye movement responses with a slight latency of course. And this is the input-output relationship. This is the increasing head acceleration of the stimulus up to 6,000 degrees per second squared. And this is the gain. This is the eye velocity divided by head velocity of the vestibular reflex. And as you can see, the gain is close to one. There's a slight drop with increasing stimulus magnitude down to perhaps about 0.95. That's the normal vestibular reflex to rapid passive head accelerations. This is impulsive testing in a patient who's had a total unilateral vestibular deafferentation with removal of vestibular schwannoma. This is head accelerations towards the on direction of the only remaining se semicircular canal that is contralesional. This is in the off direction of the only remaining semicircular canal. Head velocity is in blue, eye velocity is in yellow. And one can see straight away a big difference between the on direction of the only semicircular canal and the off direction of the only semicircular canal. And plotting this as gain as a function of head acceleration, it's, you can see straight away that the gain is way down even in the on direction of the sole remaining semicircular canal. The gain is maximum gain is only about 0.6 and drops to about 0.5 with the highest head accelerations. In the off direction of the canal, it starts at about 0.4 and drops down to about 0.1. This is a person who's had a partial unilateral deafferentation, spontaneous vestibular neuritis. This is in the on direction of the sole semicircular canal. This is in the off direction of the canal. And one can see here in the on direction, the gain starts about 0.8 and goes down to about 0.7. And in the off direction starts at 0.7 and goes down to about 0.4. This is the asymmetry, the on-off asymmetry of a single semicircular canal. This is in the excited direction and this is in the inhibitory direction. This is push without pull, this is pull without push. Now this is a three-dimensional representation of the same data. If one now imagines these increasing head velocities are now displayed as a three-dimensional figure. So this line here represents 50 degrees per second squared, 50 degrees per second uh, head impulses, and this represents 300 degree per second head impulses. This is peak head velocity here, and here displayed as a raster figure. <clears throat> Time is left to right, which is about 400, 500 milliseconds, and the magnitude of the head velocity is on the vertical scale. That's 300 degrees per second. Now that's the head velocity stimulus, and here's the eye velocity response. One can see straight away that the gain is very close to one. And these are some catch-ups of cards, absolutely minute. They will not be visible to the naked eye, to the clinical observer. 
This is somebody who's got a unilateral vestibular lesion. This is in the off direction, obviously. All these catch-ups are cards. They're all overt. They'll all be visible to clinical observer. This is the first patient we saw in the video. This is the second patient we saw in the video who also has a marked deficit in the vestibular ocular reflex, but this patient's saccades mainly occur during the head movement. They are not apparent. They have to be measured here with scleral search coils. Here's both the head velocity and the covert saccades shown on the same trace, uh, same figure. Here's 50 degree per second, 300 degree per second head impulses. Here's the vestibular ocular reflex, and here are the covert saccades with a few overt saccades afterwards. So if we look now at a total unilateral vestibular deafferentation, we can see here this is the normal range of the vestibular ocular reflex. This is in the on direction of the remaining semicircular canal, and this is in the off direction. This is what leads to the clinical sign of canal paresis. Here's the asymmetry. Clearly, the asymmetry between the on-off directions increases as stimulus velocity increases. The normal range, there's no asymmetry. By the time we get up to 6,000 degrees per second squared, there's 60% 60 60 asymmetry. This is with a partial unilateral afferentation. The gain in the on direction is better, almost normal in the low accelerations. Here's the gain in the off direction, declining with increasing stimulus magnitude. <clears throat> and the asymmetry here now saturates perhaps at about 3,000 degrees per second squared. Now this is comparing a total deafferentation with a partial deafferentation. We can see the gains with a total deafferentation are worse than with a partial deafferentation, and the asymmetry is greater with a total deafferentation than a partial deafferentation. <clears throat> this is simply another way of showing when these covert and overt saccades occur. Here's a healthy subject showing the profile of eye velocities. And here in grey, we show increasing head velocity. The darker it is, the higher the velocity. And you can see the very few corrective saccades that